Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com coming at you today for another YouTube response video. These are so popular, we thought we'd do it again. <laughs> so a lot of times we get questions on YouTube and I try to respond to so much of them guys. So I thought, let's just throw a couple of these together in a, in a little video response. Without further ado, we'll just launch right into it. You are on death row and you are given your final shave. You can use any razor, aftershave, brush, balm, etc. What products would you use? Uh, I guess I gave an original answer of a Rex Ambassador, a Persona 74 blade, a Holy Black Lavender Creeper, Simpsons Silver Tip Brush, and Everclear for an <laughs> aftershave and maybe just a swig of it as well. Um, yeah, I, I stand by my decision. I, I am such a creature of habit and I do love the Rex Ambassador, go figure. And I do love the Persona 74. I've said it before, they're hard to find blades made in the seventies. They were so good, good. They were taken off the market because people weren't changing blades fast enough. And if you can find them, they're usually a couple dollars a blade, but I do love them. Holy Black Lavender Creeper. Yeah, that was like a, a special release years ago. And it had this weird, Culotta, I think it was like synthetic alcohol that as you were applying it, it wasn't really feeling like there was like a menthol kind of alcohol effect. And all of a sudden, like your face literally was like super cold feeling. And I, I loved it. I used every bit of that lavender creeper. I need to ask Stefan from Holy Black if they have any extra. Simpson silver tip brush. Come on, that's that's basic one. Maybe, maybe Plasson. Maybe I'd go for Plasson High Mountain White because that's like the creme de la creme. And then Everclear for an aftershave. Yeah, at that point, I wouldn't care if I had irritation. I would like to just throw it on and have, feel the burn and also maybe take a quick swig. Why not? I'm going to die. <laughs> There's a theme with this soap line. First, it's 1955. Now it's 1966. What's next? 1977 or a prequel, 1944? How far back are you going? Uh, yes, if you if you didn't already hear the news, as of today's filming, we are just a few weeks uh, post the release of uh, the second Rex soap, 1966. This is uh, based off of some famous 60s fragrances that had uh, citrus and, and woodsy notes. So this has got tangerine and bergamot and sandalwood, and it's got the tallow base, so it's, it's got that really nice cushiony, silky feel to it. Yeah. Um, you did pick up, it's, and the next one will be 1977. I figured Rex is all about the mid-century modern. If you look at the branding and the whole idea of Rex is going back to the uh, excellence, revisit excellence, as we say. So yes, 50s, 60s, 70s are mid-century, and so we'll definitely do 77 next. What it will be, don't know yet, still working on it, but uh, hopefully release for the fall. That's the goal. And will I go back further? 44, that sounds interesting. Like wartime, like Eisenhower, D-Day kind of stuff. Maybe we'll do like a complete um, opposite. Like we go like in the 1800s, 1888. I don't know. I mean, something that's like a really old school recipe. Uh, what I guess I got one of the inspirations from this whole idea. I am an avid drinker of microbrewed beer. Yes, I'm like most American males in their 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, one of my favorite brewing companies that no longer is micro, got pretty big, is a new Belgium company. They have a beer called 1554, and it was based off a recipe that they found. It was a beer that was made in churches and abbeys a long time ago, back in the Middle Ages. And they found the recipe and they kind of brought it back to life. And I always liked that beer and I liked that whole idea, that story. So that probably was a little kernel of an idea with this whole 1966. Also, Rex, I thought, okay, we already have these names like Ambassador and Envoy and all this like diplomatic ranks. Are these going to have those same names? Like, oh, this is the Attaché. Like, I just thought, let's just start with something else. Rex is about the mid-century. It's all about revisiting excellence. Let's go back in time. Like we're turning back the time and we're just going to go visit a year and smell what that year smells like. <laughs> so that, that was my idea. But I do like your idea of 1944, maybe even further back. How often are you supposed to sharpen a straight razor? As often as you need to. And uh, that's, I, I sounds like a stupid answer, but think of it like this. When you buy an automobile, they say you need to change the oil every six months or 5,000 miles, right? They give you that, that 
that time or that duration. I would give the same thing for straight razors. I would say every six months or as needed. You know, if you're not using your straight razor, it's not going to get any dollar to sit in there. But if you are using it, it needs to be, you know, um, you know, refreshed and you can, you can try to do that yourself with um, like strapping compounds that can help with abrasion quality of, of keeping the edge nice and keen, but occasionally needs to get on some stones. And if your beard is super coarse and like, you know, that they say this is like going through copper wire of the same diameter. So if you are beating the heck out of your blade and it just feels uncomfortable, send it in. You may have to send it in every two months, every three months. If you get a super coarse beard and you're using it daily, if you're using it occasionally, you have a light beard, maybe one or, one or two times a year. So it's based off of um, usage and, and a little bit of time. I would say more usage than time. Does anyone know the difference between Persona Labs and Persona Med Preps other than price? Yes. When it comes to ordering, we order through uh, the maker and distributors, actually not Persona at all. That's just a brand name. It's actually a company called Accutech. And when we order through Accutech, remember, they're, they're making way more than just double-edged blades. Like double-edged blades is like four or five SKUs in their catalog that's a huge Excel file with all these other utility blades and blades for carpentry and surgeons and knives and cutting machines and I mean all just all sorts of things uh, that use sharp sharp blades. When it comes to the double-edged blades we literally have to just look at the skew because their their descriptions are literally a single name it says like persona comfort plus or persona uh, comfort coated I mean it's, it's generic very bland names and we just only can know by the number. My experience is the lab blues and the blue wrapper are way more comfortable way sharper than the med preps I've been told that the med preps are the same blade that you will find in the little gray silvery kind of dispensers that you'll see like at the pharmacies or grocery stores and sometimes it has Kroger or CVS or Walgreens or some other brand on there but if you look carefully it'll say Persona or Accutech on it and th so if you like those which I consider more like a like a medium blade like three, three and a half, whereas I consider the lab blues like four, four and a half. We do have them on our site broken down like five, 10, 15, but they do not come in a little deal like this. It's literally this long cardboard sleeve and we have them, at, you know, you can buy like individual quantities of them and we have them priced out accordingly. That's what I understand is the difference. The med prep, the, the legend is that they're used in hospitals for, you know, prepping a surgical area. If you have to have like your arm, you know, some incision in your arm, they're going to shave all this arm hair off with those med prep blades. That's what I was told. Living in Arizona, what is your favorite Mexican food dish? You know, I am so glad that you asked that question because I'm dead serious because um, we do have some of the absolute best Mexican food. Now, I would, I would qualify that and put a little asterisk after the word Mexican. I'm not some expert, but we do have more of what's called Sonoran Mexican food here in Arizona, or what's considered Tex-Mex, um, because we are close to Texas and Mexico, right? Whereas if you go deep into Mexico, you're going to have much more authentic Mexican food, which probably you won't, you know, you'll be like, hey, where's, where's the, the, you know, uh, carne asada burrito? And they're like, what's a burrito? And you're like, I'm in Mexico. Of course they have burritos. No, they don't. That's a Mexican food or like a Mexican-American thing or Tex-Mex kind of thing with having burritos. Real Mexican food is much more about like fresh corn tortillas that were, you know, literally hand-cooked as you're eating them or uh, more of rices and beans and, um, you know, fresh fish. Like, gosh, I've never been in Mexico uh, way down, I think, uh, Cabo, San Lucas or maybe it's Cancun. I can't remember. And um, we, had, we had fresh fish that literally I watched the guy spear the fish. He brought it on shore, cooked it on the fire, and we were eating the fish within 30 minutes. I mean, it was like, that's fresh. And salsa doesn't come out of a can. Salsa is someone who's sitting there chopping cilantro and onions and tomatoes and peppers and blending it, you know, in real time. Like, that's, that's salsa. Uh, much more chunky, much more fresh. It's also fresca. But all that being said, what's my favorite Mexican food dish? I love carne asada. Carne asada is definitely more of a Sonoran thin, but you take a flank steak, which is a thin, 
steak that's kind of, I think it's more like 80% beef, 20% fat, so it's a little more fatty. And then you quickly grill it on both sides. And that is traditional for like carne asada tacos, carne asada burritos, carne asada uh, carmelos, or any other version of taking carne asada, cojita cheese, um, you know, some fresh cilantro, fresh onion, fresh tomato, like 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 uh, pico de gallo basically, and putting it with a fresh tortilla. So I love I love carne asada. I've made it at home, made it at the workshop. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. That's my favorite for sure. Okay. Lastly, what is the strangest review you have ever received? The strangest review. I'm reading these for the first time in real time, guys. What is the strangest review you've ever received? Um, I think we had somebody write like a novella, like like a paragraph or two as a review of a product, and he wove the name of the product or like how he used the product into like a narrative. Like he told a story about a fictional event, like, Oh, uh, I was traveling on Camelback through the Sahara Desert, and I came upon a aquifer of water, and luckily I had my 1966 soap there. It was like a Jay Peterman catalog, like, like legitimately. He wrote this beautiful narrative of using this product in this fictional, fictional way. So I'm a big fan of like Seinfeld, and I always remember the J. Peterman catalog and, and, and um, Elaine working for J. Peterman and having to write these stories, these descriptions of like a Panama hat and, you know, the, this blazer or whatever she had to write and uh, having to weave these little stories. And I think that was my favorite because it reminded me of a J. Peterman catalog from Seinfeld, which I think was really a parody of J. Crew. I could be wrong on that. Tell me if I'm wrong. We appreciate you viewing our video today. Thank you for supporting Razor Emporium and for supporting our channel. Please hit the bell to notify you every time we come out with a new video. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already been subscribed. Come on, guys. That's how we grow. And uh, we will see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. Thanks, guys.